I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about if you believe your ex is not coming back. Many of you are going through a breakup right now and things feel hopeless. You don't think your ex is gonna come back, they've been cold with you, they don't wanna talk with you, and every attempt that you've made to reconnect with them has probably made things worse. Unfortunately, this is what happens when we're going through a breakup. And turning a breakup around often means you have to do the opposite of what you want to do. So when you're in a situation and you've likely come to the channel after you're begged and pleaded and done things that felt instinctually right to you to, to repair that connection, to make those bids to connect with them, that's normal, right? That's instinct that we're doing that. That's our survival instincts taking over us. But those things don't work when somebody's trying to end the relationship. You need to make bids and repair the connection when you're in the relationship. But when somebody decides they want to walk away, you've got to leave them alone. And anything other than that is likely going to make things worse in most cases. Okay, so if you're thinking that your ex is not going to come back just because how they have been behaving recently or your last interactions with them, don't base your judgment simply on that. Now, I'm not going to say that those things don't matter. They certainly do, but they often don't matter as much as you think they will as time goes by. And I've said this for years. Feelings change like the clouds that move across the sky. It's so true. A feeling isn't something concrete. You feel one way at one moment in time, but as time passes and events take place, you're going to feel differently. And that's going to go through every day life, right? You're, you're going to feel happy at certain points of the day, then tired and scared and anxious as the day progresses. So, the same thing is going to happen to your ex in no contact. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to come back, okay? Not everybody comes back, but many people do come back, and many people who don't think they'll ever hear from their ex or have another opportunity with their ex do hear from their ex and can turn it around. So please don't just stay in a negative state because things ended poorly with your ex. In most cases, it's going to end poorly. Breakups don't usually end well. There's usually begging and pleading and grand gestures and handwritten letters. But the key is to stop doing those behaviors as soon as possible. That gives you a better chance of turning things around. So understand that just because your ex may not care about repairing things or don't want to repair things with you right now doesn't mean that they can't change their mind in the future. I see this all the time. I'm constantly talking to people and coaching people that are getting their ex back and we're working it out towards the end or people that send me success stories and we just don't have the time to put out all that content. We put out tremendous amounts of content and so we can't always put out the success stories. I like to share them, especially when there are certain things that I could say, oh, this is a good point we could make and this is a good thing we could talk about. But if you believe and you think your ex is not going to come back, I can tell you, don't let that hinder your motivation. If you let that belief or that thought affect how you behave in no contact, you're going to regret it one way or another. Either they're going to come back and you're going to not be prepared for it 
or you're gonna find somebody else that you're really excited about and you're gonna make the same mistakes with attachment issues. That's why I created the Creative Healing Course and the workbooks because those are the things that really help you grow. When people say do the work, I actually created work for you that you could sit down 30 minutes a day. Even if you get workbooks one through 10, that's 96 videos, I believe. I mean, how long is it gonna take you to watch 96 videos and answer questions about those videos? It's gonna take you a long time and it's gonna really change your life. So today I've got a really good success story from somebody who, you guessed it, didn't think their ex was ever gonna come back. So let's get into this one. It's a little bit long, but you're gonna see all the things that happen. You probably had a lot of these same things happen in your breakup. They said, hello, Coach Craig. I wanted to share a success story that I felt I owe you. Please share your success stories with us. You can always email them on the website. My email is on there. Just put success story in the title and we love to see those things and share those things. So always send a success story when you get one. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't send us success stories and then they wind up in another breakup years later and they tell, oh yeah, by the way, I've been with so-and-so all this time. Well, did you send me a success story? No, I didn't send one. <laughs> Come on guys, we wanna know when you have a success story. Just like right now, when you see other people succeed, you wanna see how they do. They said, I have to admit, you and your channel has changed my life in ways that I didn't think were even possible. Like many people that find your channel, I was going through a painful breakup, the worst pain of my life. I can relate with that. You know, I have openly joked about all the symptoms I've gone through in my breakups, you know, and I've talked about my uh, situation with the Applebee's girl. And sometimes people will say, oh, I think Coach Craig is still hung up on that. Not at all. But the reason that I talk about that is that breakup was so profound for me and for so many different ways. And I learned so much about myself, so much about breakups. And I truly empathize with you guys when you're going through it because I know how bad it was for me. So the reason I bring up that breakup is not because I'm longing for her. It's just that I'm trying to share with you that I get why you're going through this. I went through this and that is why I do this. My whole life has been affected by breakups. I had parents that were each married three times. Okay, so I've been really wanting to understand this stuff my whole life. My girlfriend and I had broken up after two and a half years of being together and I made every mistake in the book. But because of your work, I truly transformed myself and I've changed my relationship with my girlfriend. Yes, she is my girlfriend again. I'm getting along better with my coworkers and I understand my parents for the first time in my life. Yes, this is so enlightening when we learn about attachment theory. It just gives you an insight and an understanding of mental health. And that's what I'm trying to do with teaching that stuff is really help you understand that those things really have a big impact on our romantic connections. I don't know where to begin with this, but honestly, I think the thing that shocked me the most was how quickly things fell apart with my girlfriend and how fast everything spiraled out of control. Things got so tense at one point, people in her apartment complex threatened to call the police because we were arguing outside in the parking lot. But I'll get to that. I'm in my early 30s and my girlfriend is almost 30 years old and we have had a great relationship and friendship. Now that I found your channel and your work, I realize that there were a lot more things going on than I could have ever understood. I now see that I have an anxious attachment style and my ex leans more avoidant. And I used to make a lot of small gestures to show her that I loved her, but now I realize those things made her feel guilty and it wasn't her love language. Around fall of last year, I noticed my girlfriend was kind of bickering at me more. She was getting more irritated by me and seemed kind of put off when I would try and be affectionate with her. Okay, there's him being anxious and wanting to feel that closeness, you know, feel that space with closeness and it's overwhelming her and she's probably getting annoyed by it. And when she would get upset and back off, 
Instead of just giving her space, I used to say things to make her feel guilty about it. I would try and pressure her. I didn't even realize it at the time, but I was getting under her skin. Yeah, those are those things that we often see our parents do and we reenact those things. We have to break that cycle. Breaking the cycle takes work, guys. It's not easy to break those things that our parents did that we saw so many years as children that it's in our unconscious. That's why I have the creative healing course that really gets in depth with that stuff because to break that cycle and create healthy new patterns it's going to take work. If you're 30 years old, you've been seeing this for roughly 30 years of your life with your caregivers, I mean. And so undoing those things and replacing it with healthy behaviors takes time and effort and emotional self-control. If I'm being honest, her being distant with me and not wanting to be as affectionate was getting on my nerves. Lo and behold, we were in the anxious avoidant trap. So the holidays went okay, but I have to admit I wasn't feeling too good about the relationship. There were even moments where I considered ending things. How many of you guys were thinking about ending it with your ex at some point that you weren't happy with them? It happens a lot, right? Things aren't always perfect, you know, even for your ex. You know, you got to understand, I bet there was at least some day, some point, some time where you thought about breaking up with them. So don't try to villainize your ex. Be careful of that. Be mindful of that because, you know, people aren't perfect. There are no perfect people allowed to watch our videos. Unless it's Margaret. Okay. Both of my parents always argued and bickered and my mom constantly guilted my dad. See, that's what he was just doing. And I think I was doing the same thing to her, kind of replaying what I had seen my whole life. See, you see, he's really learning this stuff. He's doing the work and now he's seeing it. We started to get more and more frustrated and irritated with each other in the beginning of the year and through the springtime. At that point, she said she wanted to start doing more active stuff outside with some of her girlfriends like tennis, kickboxing classes and going to the park to ride her bike. But when she wanted to do those things, I was like, well, why don't you want me to go? Yep. And, you know, if she wanted you to go, she would have invited you, but she needed some space. She wanted some time with her friends and that can really trigger us, hurt our feelings too. My feelings were getting so hurt by everything. See that? I see these things. I, I already could tell it was going to hurt his feelings. My feelings were getting so hurt by everything and I just became more and more upset the more she would want to go out with her friends and it was just girlfriends by the way. And then she would start looking for reasons not to see me and it was I think because she was losing attraction for me because I wasn't in a masculine place. I was looking really insecure and uncertain. Sure, if you think about it, She's wanting to go out with friends and instead of him saying, okay, well, I'm going to go out with my friends too. He probably was sitting at home. Where are you at? What are you doing? When are you going to get home? When am I going to see you? And that just kills attraction. So obviously it kept getting worse until finally she said she wanted a break. And that's when I completely fell to pieces. I couldn't give her time and space. I would just get anxious. I would text her things like, do you miss me? Do you want to see me? I miss you so much. And it seems like the more I would do that, the worse things became. Yep, he's right. That is exactly what happens. I just couldn't seem to help myself. It was like I just kept coming up with reasons to justify reaching out or stopping by her place. Uh oh, the stopping by the place is a big one. This, is, this one causes major, major, major problems. Oh boy, I can already see where this is going to go. I would think that maybe she was hanging out with another guy and I would just show up at her house and kind of bully myself inside for a little bit. Oh boy, now this, this is, this is going to be the breakup. This is going to cause the breakup right here, right? It's, it's too much at this point. Of course, there was no one there. 
but it was like I became a different person. It got so bad, she said she couldn't take it anymore. She wanted to break up, but she wasn't ruling anything out. Honestly, I'm surprised he got that second part based on him showing up at her place. So, that, I mean, most people at that point would have had, if you come by again, I'm going to call the police. Women get really, really scared when guys do stuff like that. They hadn't broken up yet, though, so that, that had a difference in it. But still, pretty bad. It was not, not long after that where I found your channel. I was really beating myself up about the mistakes. And that's when I did my Skype with you. I loved your honesty. I was afraid of what you might say, but you put things in a way that was very helpful to understand and sincere, but honest with everything that you told me. I was literally shocked anytime she would reach out. Okay, right? This is you guys. You're shocked when your ex reaches out. You can't believe it. I can't believe it. I just had an email this morning. I can't believe it. I believe it. I see it all the time. I know what you're going through before you even know what's going to happen and how it's going to get there. When you see these things day after day for many, many years like I have, you kind of know what tends to happen. Now, of course, every situation is different, but there are a lot of tendencies that happen with people. Okay, so he said, I was literally shocked anytime she would reach out. And she would kind of do these breadcrumb things where she would text me and then I would text her back and she would disappear again. Then a few weeks later, she would text again and disappear again. Yep, and if you're going through that, it's gonna scare the heck out of you, right? Because you're just gonna be so confused. Had I not found your channel, I would have completely lost it because those things were triggering me so bad before. I felt like a crazy person at times, but this time I was able to stay more centered and I was just and I just kept reviewing the notes from our call and it really brought me a lot of peace. I think it was about the fifth time that she reached out that something felt a little bit different and she seemed a little bit warmer. So that's when I asked her if she'd like to get together and catch up. She seemed reluctant at first, so I stayed calm. That's where a lot of people would panic. I think she could sense that I wasn't going to be as overbearing so she agreed to get together. We had a great time together and I was able to hold her hand and give her a small kiss goodnight. All right, it's a good sign. It's crazy that a small kiss goodnight felt like so much when I had kissed her hundreds or thousands of time in our relationship, but it did. Waiting for her to reach out was agonizing because it took her another two and a half weeks, but I had been working on the course every day and any time I felt anxious, I would sit down and work on the course. That's replacing something negative, like that overwhelming amount of anxiety, with something positive, where you're learning about breakups, you're focusing on something that's keeping you grounded, and you're also thinking about the breakup, but in a positive way. There's also either nine or 10 sets of audio affirmations in the course to help you ground, stay grounded and relax. And there's a, create, a couple of guided visualizations that are meant to be peaceful for you to help you when you're feeling like things are out of control. It wasn't until the second date that she started to open up. That's when she started to tell me some of the things that you always say. She told me that she thought about me all the time. She said that she went from feeling like things couldn't work out to thinking about me nonstop. This is what I tell you guys all the time but only when you leave your ex alone. They're not gonna feel like this if you're reaching out. It just doesn't work like that. That's like saying, I keep giving you food and I'm wondering why you're not hungry. Well, it's the same thing. She said that she didn't think I had it in me to ever leave her alone. I, just, I heard someone else say that too recently. And when she saw those changes in me, it made her start to feel like she could really lose me. You look at this, it's starting to flip. It's starting to, it's like an uno reverse. <laughs> she started checking my social media often and it actually started driving her crazy. All the things that you talk about doing, she actually did. I still can't believe it. Believe it, 
I'm telling you guys, this happens a lot. I know this is a long email, but this is a really good one that's showing a lot of the things that I see a lot of the time, so it's really good to see it playing out. I just kept focusing on having a great time with her and showing her that I was more emotionally stable and slowly the attraction came back. There was one day I felt so much anxiety to talk about the breakup. What I warn you guys about, talking about the breakup. I thought that's what we needed to do all those years ago before I understood any of this stuff. That's what I thought. We've got to talk about the breakup. We have to talk about this. Talking about it just makes people overwhelmed. It, it really makes it worse. And wanting to talk about what happened, but your words really stood with me and I was able to resist, LOL. That made a huge difference because it was, it was only a couple weeks after that, she said she wanted to fix things and get back together and that she could see a lot of changes in me. I really thought I would be the one person who didn't hear back from my ex. I was absolutely convinced of it. And here we are back together. I know that everything is still fresh and new and I still have to be careful. I'm going to put myself on probation for another, another nine months from the day of writing this email. I'm going to keep doing your creative healing course and the workbooks until I know deep in my heart, I will never regress back to that old version of myself. You, Margaret and Victoria have truly changed my life. Even if, it, even if for some reason we don't work out, I know that this version of me can handle anything that comes my way. I just want everybody to know that there is hope and hope is a good thing. Hope kept me motivated, but fear kept me on my toes. Yeah, I, th I think that's something that I told them on the call. Because like when I told you I have done stand-up comedy for many years, I used to get a lot of anxiety before big shows. You know, not the smaller shows, but like, you know, when there's like 300, 350 people in the crowd, I would get very anxious and I would kind of pace with my, I would pace over and over again, reviewing my jokes over and over again. Why did I do that? Because I always wanted to have the best set of the night. I always had wanted to be the best. Now, I, that didn't mean I was always the best. I certainly wasn't. But that kept me wanting it. That that hunger and that anxiety always made me relentless in that way. Like over preparing. I told you guys, I love to over prepare because I'd much rather over prepare. And it, if it doesn't go well, I feel, okay, well, I know I've tried my best to prepare for that. Then under prepare and think, I wish I had done this. I regret not doing that. So I like to use that anxiety to keep me sharp. Last thing he says here is your situation may seem hopeless now, but when you stick to the strategies, you'll be surprised how much things can change. Excellent email. Thank you for sharing it. Guys, I know you think your ex isn't going to come back and you can't turn it around. I know it. Believe me. And I'm not telling you that everybody can turn it around. Not everybody is emotionally equipped to do it. Not everybody will even have a second chance. But if you really think about everything that we teach on this channel, we're trying to educate you. We're trying to make you more confident than you have ever have ever been. And that's going to help you either with your ex or with anybody that you date, any of your relationships. It doesn't have to be about your ex. And that is really the beauty and why our channel really changes lives and improves mental health and your relationships. And I think that's probably why I have some, some of the most loyal supporters I could ever ask for. You guys are just incredibly supportive and motivating. And I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. And you know, we all, Margaret did too. I mean, you should have seen the amount of research Margaret used to do every week for the videos she would write. She would read books, entire books, just to learn a topic just to share about it and present on one or two videos in a week. I mean, that's the level of motivation we've had here to change lives. So thank you guys for all the support. And of course, if you want to get my help personally, you can get that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course or the knowledge workbooks only on my website. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. 
and I will talk with you soon.